So Google's decided we need a taste of what's coming right after the yet to be released Android 15. Yes, QPR 1 Beta 2 is here and it's actually full of some changes, some big changes at that. So let's check them out. So first up is the brand new quick keyboard switcher. So in regular old Android 14, there's a little keyboard icon if you have multiple keyboards installed on your device in the bottom right corner of your display to change the keyboard at any time via a little pop-up menu. Here in Android 15 QPR 1 Beta 2, this little icon, well, it copies the iPhone globe icon you may have seen in iOS. Tapping this little icon just cycles through any of the installed keyboards on your phone quickly. A long press brings up any changes that you want to make. You can actually choose the options as well and go into the settings menu because there's a new shortcut. So you can just enable or disable keyboards on your phone. I think this is a really nice touch. It's something that just enhances experience and is something that probably is a little bit overdue. Android 15 QPR 1 Beta 2 also redesigns the settings application with some material you tweaks and overall better organization. I was a little bit confused opening the settings app for the first time because there's a new bigger search option. There's not as much white space here because as well on top of that, there are groupings for specific options and they're all tied together. So we have a Google section right at the top now instead of towards the bottom. There's a section for the network, internet, and all things connectivity on your device. The apps related section includes notifications, sound and vibration, display, and any customization options that you want to tweak. There's also a section for on-device admin stuff. So things like storage, a backup and copy data option, which was until recently, at least until this update, limited to the Pixel 9 series. There's battery and system and phone information in this area too. There's a security section here, which just includes all of the information to keep your account safe. Things like location, passwords, pass keys, accounts, digital wellbeing, and other safety options as well. And finally, there is an accessibility section with a tips and support option also included here. One other thing to note here is that the settings section icons are a little thicker than they were on the previous builds and there's a little bit more true separation between these areas. It's going to take a little while to get used to as we haven't really seen much alteration to this list for a long time. So in terms of muscle memory, I must admit that did strike me straight away, but it is a nice change nonetheless. There's a few minor animation changes that are also present in this update. This is always something that catches my eye. You might notice these right away or you might it might take a couple of goes like it did for me. The lock screen, it seems to have a little bit more of a pop and a bounce when you actually tap to activate it from the always on display or the lock screen itself. I think it's super minor. You probably wouldn't notice unless it was pointed out to you. There's also when you open applications, there's a really, really minor change to the animation and a very, very brief blur of your wallpaper that I think is almost impossible to notice right away. iOS does something similar, so it's not all that new, but it is a slightly different change. It just means when you're opening applications, if it does look a little bit different, this is probably what you're seeing. If you use a color correction mode in Android 15 QPR 1 Beta 2, this adds an option to adjust the intensity of the color correction itself. Just tweak the slider and you'll notice a visuals change on your phone. I do think this is a nice option for people who do want to use color correction, but maybe put off by the default options that were available in Android 14 and older. Google is also modernizing the UI for screen recording and casting here in Android 15 QPR Beta 2 with a prominent chip indicator that looks exactly like the chip you'll see when you do make a phone call on the top of the status bar. So you can now stop recording by tapping the pill with the dialog box now popping up with a animation to confirm or cancel that. Previously, you actually had to open the notification shade, thus revealing any alerts or any notifications you had on your device. And if you didn't trim that video before sharing it, this just removes that and the notification still appears in the shade to stop the traditional way or by tapping that quick settings tile if you do want to. But I think this is a quicker way. It's a little bit more simple and it's more obvious. So when casting from your device in previous builds, you actually saw two little cast alerts. There was a white notification and a red status bar icon to indicate that. Like screen recording when you cast from your device now in this update, there is a chip next to the time which also features a stopwatch, which I think is a nice consistent touch that do, does help you when you're casting to other devices, just knowing how long you're doing that. And if you've forgotten to do it, it also gives you that little time indicator as well. Another change here that you might notice is when you get a notification when doing things like watching a video or playing a game full screen, basically anything in the landscape, there's a return of a smaller notification which you will need to tap to expand. I think it's helpful, but it would be nice to be able to adjust or enable or disable this if you want to. You have to tap this to see all of the data, all of the information and access those quick reply and quick reply options. One thing to note is that notification cooldown is also available here in Android 15 QPR Beta 2. However, it's not actually visible unless you search for this manually in the settings application. There's no extra toggles here like there was in the previous build, but you can see just what it will do, which is reduce annoying notifications or spam on your device. So hopefully in the next version or the next beta of this update, we will get the option as well to see that toggle it and do what you want with it. 
on Pixel 8 and newer, if or when you plug your phone into an external display using a USB-C to HDMI cable or even a dongle, we now have more settings to customize and enhance this experience with a dedicated external display section, which you will find in connected devices once your device is plugged in. This lets you rotate the screen from 90 to 270 degrees, so you can find that perfect orientation for you. It even has an option to adjust the resolution, but that is still locked right now. It's grayed out. It is locked now to 1080p, at least for the time being. But I do think it would be great to get even more options like higher resolutions and even lower resolutions if you do want to adjust that, affect that on the displays you're using, or even a frame rate adjuster, which I do hope we get later down the line as it would be really nice to have that option on external displays. The final big changes, and these are big changes, come for the Pixel tablet specifically, which I think deserves a little bit more love from Google Wholesale anyway. So if you do have a Pixel tablet and you install this, you will finally now have access to lock screen widgets on the Pixel tablet. The only downside is that this is, again, only available for the tablet, at least for now. When you have a tablet updated to this update, go to settings, display and touch, and then the lock screen option, then toggle show widgets on lock screen. For me, this was enabled by default actually once I updated this. Once your device is locked again, go for the lock screen, just swipe right and you'll get a default layout with an update to almost fully customize this section as you can't put the widgets exactly everywhere you want on screen. It's more of a grid format. Google's pop-up explainer of the function itself doesn't mention third-party widgets, but it should be able to use any Android widget that is on your device or pre-installing your device if you do want to. I think it works really nicely and you'll get all kinds of quick information at a glance without needing to unlock or open your tablet. And I'm hoping this does come to phones too, because it feels like a throwback and a forward thinking option at the very same time. And it's really nice to get that at a glance key information without having to unlock, especially with such a big device. The biggest though and most exciting change in Android 15 QPR1 Beta 2 is a new dedicated desktop mode for the Pixel tablet specifically. So this is a long time in the making and it creates a brand new experience when you do enable it. You will need to go to develop options and enable free from Windows. Then after a reboot, you will have this new functionality right away. So any app that you open might initially launch full screen like it would do previously, but there's now a little tab or like a pull tab at the top of the screen itself that you can tap or pull down to change to a floating or resizable window. You can full screen again with the little tab icon to close like you would on a desktop or the X itself to close the application. That's really similar to how you would do on Chrome OS or even Windows. There is a little app icon in the upper left of the app info bar. Tapping this lets you access things like split screen, full screen or windowed mode options. Tapping the top bar itself also expands into that sort of full screen view, but with those floating options intact. I think one of the best changes here though is that if you drag out individual Chrome tabs, they're treated as individual app windows. So you can split screen Chrome tabs and have multiple open at the same time, which I think is great for multitasking. And it's something that has been missing on the Pixel tablet and even the Pixel Fold, I must admit. What's interesting is that if you have apps open in the background, like you probably will anyway, just dragging down using the pull tab brings them into this multi-screen view. Then in the recent section, you'll see the main desktop view with all of the apps open rather than as individual apps like you would on your phone previously or your tablet previously. The multi view is actually treated almost like one big app instance. So all of those collated into the one place. So closing this itself will close all of the apps you've opened here or are using within and it will just exit this multi-screen mode. I think having a mouse and keyboard paired to your device is essential to get the most out of this new mode because you can use it a lot like a mini Chromebook, although with, without some functionality. Using a mouse lets you resize a little easier with the cursor itself, which I don't think works all that nicely with touch controls, but touch controls do work, I must admit. I can't seem to get some of the supposed keyboard shortcuts to work on my Logitech Bluetooth keyboard. Maybe it's because it's designed specifically for Mac, I'm not actually sure. You should also be able to hide the persistent taskbar here as well, but again, this doesn't seem to be working all the time. That said, the old command and alt tab function, which you may use on desktops and on laptops as well, that's it's not really new, but I do think it works really nicely here, especially as you can have multi windows open and switch to them really quickly. Also, when you open an app from the taskbar or even the app drawer itself, 
There's a really lovely card style animation when the app itself comes into view or floats into your screen. The, each of these little floating windows also has a night, nice little drop shadow that really is nice and cohesive and I think it looks great. Visually it's a treat and it does work really well on these bigger screen devices. I like it and I do hope that this entire function gets better over time too because Google is adding this as a preview in this particular build. So yeah, that is Android 15 QPR 1 Beta 2. This is technically the update that's gonna come after Android 15 drops in October. It's confusing, I know, but it's actually pretty cool and it's caught me off guard how big this update would be and how many changes that Google seems to be bringing to the board. Let me know what you think of this update down in the comment sections below and big up to our channel members on screen now, you're real Gs, I love you very much. Cheers for watching though, and I will speak to you later.